However, we've come a, lo we've come a long way now. However, our most difficult obstacles still lie ahead. Let us overcome them and keep moving forward. The hopes and dreams of three dimensions lie in the weight of our return. We cannot let them down. <laughs> All right, when we last left off, our two fleets are reunited. The borders, take care of that. Aced a few more characters. Leveled up some of the healing robots. All right, here we go. So, let's continue. Boson particles have been detected. The Nautis Go is approaching, sir. Ooh, we made it. Guess that's good a sign in uh, and any. As good a sign as any that the bosun transmitter and receiver are working like they should. I was confident they would work, even that Seiya and Executive Officer Sonata prepared them personally. Go ahead and invite the captains and mobile units aboard. We're, we're going to hold a strategic mission, discuss a mission conference, or meeting, strategic meeting, to discuss our options for breaking through the Tarantula Nebula. Brantula Nebula? It's a really rough area inside the large Magellanic Cloud. Does that mean if we get past it, we might finally get to the Salazar system and with it, Iskenda? Sorry, wrong voice. Does that mean if we get past it, we might finally get to the Salazar system and with it, Iskendar? What's up, Nine? Are you having second thoughts about going to the intelligence briefing? I'm not sure. Interesting. Um, yes, intend the, let's attend the intelligence brief. I assume that this is a way to determine whether or not you want to go over this exposition again if this is your first playthrough. Um, if you go to the, if you go to the intelligence meeting, you'll get the information about what happens on the other happened on the alternate route whereas if this is your second playthrough or you've just gone back to an earlier save before the split you don't you can skip this your, your way to kind of skip over that i will go it's it would be nice to see everyone again after such an extended absence all right but don't force yourself yes thank you for your consideration you need time to think on your own. I can handle going there by myself. It's really fine. Or even if you just need to talk about something, I'll drop everything and listen whenever you need it. Thank you, sis. But Riley, but I really am okay. You don't need to. I'm getting a little sorry. I'm getting a little Dave spokesman there. Okay, if you're really sure, I won't bug you about it anymore. Then let's just get going now. Yes. The fact that this uh, concerned about me already lifts my spirits enough as it is, I now feel less uneasy. Thank you for always supporting me, sis. I will intend to confront my troubles directly. I hope you stay with me the whole way. Remind me again, which planet you guys end up on? Belinda. It's in the Uranometria Nebula. We jumped there to escape from Exiv's henchman Purple after he attacked us. Not that it did a whole lot of good. The enemy still managed to track us down, and we end up wound up fighting Exiv and the Mycenians anyway. Though actually, the way that DLC mission with where it drops in the, the timeline serves as a bit of foreshadowing. It's like, hey, there are still Myce Mycenians around here, around this universe, or some of them may have followed you here. We're the only threats either. Leonard came as well. It make me wonder if they somehow have more advanced warp technology than the Yamato. 
Either way, Embryo's forces transferred in after after us once they managed to detect that Konami was with Makes me think they might have something along the lines of a bosun transmitter. So the thing is with how Whispered work in Full Metal Panic, because they're receiving basically transmissions of dark technology from the future, it's entirely possible that what could be happening is that the people transmitting the dark technology from the future, like if, if Embryo is the one behind this, for example, um, the transmission of dark technology, then he he knows who he's sending to anyway. So, he can just follow the, ride the beam from his transmitter to the, dest to the destination and get the person. Begs the question of why Konami Chidori and not Captain Testarossa. Leonard can't name and kidnapped Konami. Or maybe it's more accurate to say that she walked out on us of her own volition. Of her own probably mind whammied volition, Leonard seemed to have the ability to mind women. Make me wonder if that Sophia girl who possessed her before is somehow back at it again. If I'm not familiar with that, that might be explained on that arc. If it doesn't add up, does Konami reject Sophia would put her into that deep sleep? So why would thing things changes so suddenly? Things change so suddenly. Er, the Sasuke, are you alright? Oh yeah, I'm I'm fine. Thanks, Banneker. Just focus on getting Konami back. At this point, they mostly see us as a thorn in their side for opposing the space-time future. They'll definitely come after us, even after, either after we get to Iskandar or when we get back from there. But it's a given that they'll strike sometime. When they do, that's when you rescue Konami. Yep, you got it. Leonard's real goal is to revise the past using space-time fusion, but throwing the world in the process. Major Cullinan risked his life to share the information with you. Don't want those efforts to be in vain either. Anyway, things came to a head, and eventually we defeated both Exiv and the Mycenaeans at Felda, Alina. Among them were Baron Ashura, Garad Garadabla, and the Great General of Darkness. All three of them were forced to be reckoned with in their own right. I'm going to play that in my own time, though I, I will admit I will kind of miss voicing um, Baron Ashura. Both miss and not, because Ashura is fun to voice, and also hell to voice. You also have to worry about Exiv's Aura of Evil. Aura of Evil? What's that? Ah, that's some good sarcasm there. That sounds perfectly innocuous now, doesn't it? I don't really get how it works. Basically, after his robots were baptized in it, they could come back to life after we beat them. Ah, so it's like the uh, Devil Gundam from uh, G Gundam. Creepy. So they were basically zombies in their own weird way. So how did you guys fight them off then? With the help of innocent waves. O okay. Those are psychic waves everyone emits, right? What good were they during that battle? We're not exactly sure of the science of those either. Which means there is no actual science behind this. But basically, innocent waves were somehow able to dispel the aura of evil. That's the important part. That feels like something where when you would where after a character says this, they need to that's one of those sentences where they have to stop and go, that was a sentence that just came out of my mouth just now. Sally stepped in and she was able to draw everyone, everybody's innocent waves to her, which is what we used to defeat Exiv. So it sounds like Sally's kind of working like, um... Oh god, I forgot the name of the character, uh, from King of Braves Gal Guy Gar. With, um, the guy who's able to purify the, the core of the, um, monsters. And restore them back to their original human selves. That was a hell of a sight to see, I can tell you that much. Those waves saved my hide when I was a goner, too. I get a little bit here. Lined up better in my mouth. There we go. What the commander told us, the innocent waves are basically able to trigger the phenomenon of the surrounding environment like a lambda driver. It uses mental energy to influence physics. That sounds like a real miracle if you ask me. 
Out of the way, I'm pretty sure the Psycho Frame kind of works in a similar manner. As far as the, as the Lambda Driver. Well, the Innocent Waves like stepped up to Super Robot Extremes. It might as well have been, yeah. But since we don't exactly get really get what happened, we can't exactly reproduce it either. So it really was a miracle then, huh? Oh, Wolfgang, you joined us! Oh, that's awesome! I get to do your voice! Yay! That doesn't mean I've given up how trying to figure out figure it all out, so I will determine with science just how innocent vapes work. You'll see. Hey, hold on. Haven't I seen you somewhere before? Yeah, he's that yeah, he is that evil scientist from the DG Alliance. I am what I am. I would at least appreciate if you kids learned my name. I'm Professor Wolfgang. Well, I guess the cat's out of the bag. Because we're here too. The DG Alliance has joined us! Oh boy! Oh, I get to do all your voices. That's awesome! In particular, I get to do Wolfgang's voice. Woohoohoo! Oh, that pink cat thief and that wannabe samurai guy. Mind telling us why they're hanging out with you, Mito? Well, you see, there's this... You see, Young Hathaway, there's this concept in Super Robot anim in hot-blooded action series and shown in anime called Defeat Equals Friendship. These guys followed us to Feldina, too, but they were all abandoned by Exiv when he fought us. They're not all bad, so we took them into custody. I don't trust these guys for a second. Have you forgotten how much hell they've raised for everyone? She's right. You should let them drift out to space alone, where they belong. You guys are overreacting. In all honesty, we couldn't have finished building the Innocent Wave Amplifier without the Professor's help. That's right. Listen to him. He's telling the truth. We're the ones who went put the nail in Exiv coffin after he went mad with power. We didn't find the body, though, so we... There's, but, the, but we're confident that we will never, ever see him again. I actually don't know if we'll never, ever see him again. Um, but, I mean... Baron Ashura got killed, like, twice, and he's still back? These two didn't help much. It was mostly... Well, it's too late to get them go, I guess. But they're gonna have to make up for what they've done. They don't get a free ride. Don't worry, we're way ahead of you. Everyone with the DG Alliance is working on cooking and cleaning duty under Sally's strict supervision. Although, I, I know Banjo had something he wanted to discuss with the Professor, too. Well, I say all's well that ends well in this instance. At least Exiv and the Mycenians are out of the picture. Right, down to just Embryo and Leonard now. You're forgetting one other player, Angie. Faders. Still going after the Yamato. What? Those things are still at it? We'll explain more at the actual meeting. Hayato can fill you all in on what you Not that the specifics matter all that much. We have to keep going no matter who or what gets in our way. Yeah. Including the Tarantula Nebula. Hopefully if we get within get past that, we'll finally be within arm's reach of Iskandar. Fingers crossed. Essentially, invaders are creatures that evolve from exposure to get rays and continually seek more power to them for themselves. You know, I like Hayato. I've read original Getter Robo manga. Up through Shin Getter Robo up through um, the start of the Shin Getter Robo manga. And Hayato's character arc is really interesting because he's he got he started out as a juvenile delinquent, um, student revolutionary, and now he's a scientist. I mean, he went from guy least most likely to strangle someone with their tie to scientist wearing a tie. But also looking at like. The facial scar has represented the tough experiences with being a getter pilot, like the nose scar and the eye scar. But the chin scars, though, with the pattern they're in, it makes it look like he had a real rough time shaving a cup a few times, and it just scarred permanently. Uh, he tried to be manly and use a straight razor, but just cut once too often and said, and fo somebody finally told him, listen, Hayato, it's not working. Use a safety razor, like, it, it'll work better for you. All, all around. Or an electric razor, either way. 
Stop with the sh with the straight razor. And they're the Yamato's Mave Motion engines a way of achieving just that. Right. But they're not but they're not exactly the type to other but but they're not exactly the type to just stop once they've got that. Something else that they're probably even more interested in. What more could they want beyond the engine? There's this Gandar, which holds the technology to the wave motion engine itself. Whoa, this Gandar, really? Are we really sure that's actually what the invaders are going after? They have to assume that that's their overall goal, yeah. There's no reasoning with these. They're all a bad bunch. If we're not careful, they might just suck up the whole damn planet. We can't let them do that. I mean, all our hard work would go right down the drain. So that intent to take in the planet, I suppose the only thing we can do is beat them to it, bend them off somehow. Yes, the only conclusion I can come to as well. But that means we're also going to. That also means we're going to have to go straight through the tarantula nebula. We should probably explain what that is to everyone. The Rachel Nebula sits at the very edge of the large Magellanic Cloud. Rough area, we're talking thick interstellar matter, and ion storms aplenty. The nebula itself is made up of seven stars, which we call the Seven Colored Star Alliance. Our shortest path to Iskindar is straight through them. Well, dangerous or not, I think we know what we already have to do. So we'll just go right on through the nebula so the invaders don't beat us to Iskindar. You don't understand. These stars are degenerate stars emitting relativistic jets. In layman's terms, it doesn't get any more dangerous to navigate than in there. Even this far away, our Cosmo radar is starting to experience interference. Could you just warp past it and bypass it all? Sadly, no. Not even the biggest warps can get you out the other side. The whole region's just too big. So we're in for a bumpy ride if we step in there. Right, which is why we're searching for a detour. Don't bother with that. We can't afford to take one. Just give the invaders more time to stage a counterattack on it. The threat they pose is too grave to take it slowly. We're rushing straight on through it. But we're going in the nebula after all. Well, if nothing else, I'm sure doubt the enemy will ever see it coming. Really pushing our luck here. Hope you know what you're doing, Commander. Alright, let's get down to it. Plot a course through the Seven Color Star Alliance. Earthfleet Tenku is headed for Iskandar. We're all going to die! Yay! <laughs> well, I guess that settles it. Good luck, Lieutenant Shima. We're counting on you. Leave it to me. I'll get us through. No sweat. Moments like these are what I was born to do. This feels like the the, the Red Route 1 sequence with the Laurentinian Abyssal in uh, Hunt for Red October. Captain, we're out of the lane! This should catch the invaders and gambolins by surprise. To say the least. They're in for a rude awakening when we get there and find when they get there and find us. Everyone's in such high spirits right now. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't worry so much. Also, I have a cat on my lap. You look pretty happy, Kodai. What's the occasion? It's really nice seeing everyone bending together as one. I find it really reassuring knowing what's coming up. That makes sense. What say that makes us, then? Feel like banding together, too? Was that an innuendo, Lieutenant Mori? I'm not sure what you're getting at, Mori. I mean, you've ne already kind of answered my question. I mean, you never actually called me Yuki, for one. <laughs> my god like that's um uh, neither here nor there okay that all right at which point now like the women of the fleet are like they're just just, just nailing Kodai. I find it strange you have no trouble conventing confronting the enemy, yet you can't even properly approach a woman. Baka Baka. He's right. If you keep dawdling, you might move on to greener pastures. I'd make a move if I were you. That's easy for you to say. Do you detest Tenant Mori for some reason? <laughs> no, that's not the problem. It's just... What do you all think you're doing? This operation is underway. Get back to your posts immediately. Yes, sir. Sorry, sorry for psyching off on the job. I'll focus on the mission from here on out, sir. Thanks, Commander. You really saved me there. Aw, I thought we were getting somewhere, too. 
I don't believe you need to worry, Lieutenant. Do you think so, Nine? Yes, I do. I think that we'll all be okay in the end. <laughs> Thank you, Nine. That makes me feel a little better. We get going. Good luck, Kodai! Thanks. Good luck to you too, Mori. You think you're finally over him? Just about, I guess. I wish I knew it was like to fall for someone. I hope I can find someone who can make me, can make me feel like that one, feel that one day. I think you need to get Nine's permission first. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? I mean, she's going to fulfill the overprotective little sister archetype. Duh. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. 